I like the fact that AJ is taking the Sandy Ruiz rematch overseas to new territories, regardless of whether it was Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, the UAE, China, the Philippines. I just like the fact that the heavyweight title is going elsewhere outside of the English uh, speaking nations and maybe even somewhere like Germany, which was a big powerhouse for heavyweight boxing. And it's going to new territories. I like that because I think it helps to grow the sport. However, it does come with some drawbacks. And one of the drawbacks potentially with AJ fighting anywhere outside the UK for this rematch with Ariz is the pressure that's going to be on him to entertain. Because if the AJ Ruiz rematch is in the UK, the British public are going to accept a win from Anthony Joshua. Whether it's boring or exciting, they just want him to get his belts back at this point because the pride of British boxing has been hurt. And I'm talking about the fans, not just AJ. The pride has been hurt. So they just want AJ to get them belts back by any means necessary. If it's a boring win, it's a boring win. They'll take that. Okay, that's going to be the general attitude of, uh, of Anthony Joshua fans. Whereas if AJ fights anywhere outside the UK, be it the United States, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, China, you know, the Philippines, wherever, other than maybe Nigeria, because AJ is ethnically Nigerian. But if he fights anywhere outside the UK other than Nigeria, there is going to be a lot more pressure on AJ to entertain. They're not going to be so sympathetic with him moving around the ring, uh, stinking the place out potentially, sticking and moving and not really getting involved, holding when Ruiz gets close. That is not going to go down so well outside the UK for this rematch. And that is one negative that AJ is going to have to deal with. Now, some of you guys may have seen this interview right here. It was on the JD Sports YouTube channel. And in this video, Anthony Joshua admits that at one point he heard the crowd booing in the first Andy Ruiz fight. And the booing of the crowd got to him. It made him feel like, I have to give them some entertainment. I have to perform. I have to excite them. And that combined with watching Deontay Wilder's destructive performance against Dominic Brazil uh, a couple weeks earlier, those two things made him, according to what Anthony Joshua said, go in there and start being more aggressive against Andy Ruiz after them first couple rounds. He heard the booze and he was like, oh, you know what? I need to let my hands go. I need to get this guy out of here. And once he dropped Ruiz, he said he was thinking about what Wilder had done to Brazil and trying to emulate that. And the rest is history. We will, know, we will know what happened there. It was a critical mistake. And that shows Anthony Joshua's inexperience, truth be told. Because you should never allow the crowd or an opponent to get you off your game plan. And when I see an, say an opponent, I'm, I'm not talking about the opponent in the ring necessarily. I'm talking about a rival, in this case, Deontay Wilder. You should never let them get you off your game plan. If the crowd want to boo, let them boo. <laughs> yeah, don't let them get, get you off your game plan. So that's an experience from Anthony Joshua's uh, perspective right there. And um, even Deontay Wilder himself said that he thought AJ was trying to live up to what he did a couple weeks previous against Dominic Brazil. And Wilder was right about that. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure that that played a part in terms of what AJ was doing in the ring. You know, he, he was hoping to try and emulate what Deontay Wilder had done. Um, and I mean, there may, have been a, there may have been a, you know, multitude of different factors which played into why AJ fought the way he did. Uh, but th they were certainly a couple of them. The booing of the crowd, seeing what Wilder had done and, you know, the one-upmanship between AJ and Wilder. Those were definitely two of the factors among probably many other factors. Uh, so yeah, a lot for AJ to learn there. And as I spoke about in my daily motion video analysis of the first fight, where I played the first fight on screen and you know did my analysis of it, one of the critical things that AJ needs to fix is the way he was throwing the right hand in the first fight. He was leaning in with a right hand so that you know 
when the right hand connected, AJ's head was not far away from his own right hand. And that means that he's in the firing zone of Andy Ruiz. He needs to plant his feet, stay a bit more upright when he's at long range and throw, you know, fully extend the right hand. Don't lean his whole upper body into it so much. It might not have so much power on it, okay? But you need to be more technically aware and technically astute if you're going to avoid the counters from Andy Ruiz, yeah? Leaning in with the right hand the way that he was rather than fully extending it because he was throwing it with kind of a bent arm, a slight bent arm, and then leaning in, leaning his upper body in. And when you lean your upper body in like that, you bring your head closer to your opponent. You don't want to do that against Andy Ruiz. You want to throw the right hand, fully extend it from long range, and keep your head as far away from your opponent as possible when you're throwing that right hand, yeah? More difficult to explain would be easier for me to demonstrate. <laughs> but anyway, um, lots for Anthony Joshua to improve on going into the rematch from a technical point of view, from a mental point of view. And um, as I say, overseas, a lot more pressure on AJ to entertain. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about all the points I've raised in this video. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.